The Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act was established to help the government spy on suspected terrorists outside the country. But while the intentions may have been good, the FISA Act offers very few protections for American citizens whose communications get swept up in the process. Well, Congress is racing. There is a January 19th deadline to extend the controversial act, but a bipartisan group of House lawmakers and some in the Senate hoping to insert language that boosts protections for ordinary citizens like you and me before the whole thing once again goes into effect. Joining me now to discuss that effort, Kentucky Republican Senator Rand Paul. Welcome back to the show, Senator Paul. Hey, Kennedy. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, I think this is a, a critical issue. And in a time where we're talking about uh, personalities and incendiary biographies and North Korea and immigration, it's easy for FISA to get lost in the shuffle. Uh, this is such a critical moment. Uh, tell me, what are your biggest issues with the law and what are you hoping will amend it. Well, you know, this law allows us to spy on foreigners in foreign lands, and we collect information, and we don't give them any constitutional protections. And I'm okay with that. If you live in a foreign country, you really don't get the protections of our Constitution. However, swept up in all of this information that we grab up, which is an enormous amount of information, are millions and millions of Americans, phone calls, emails, conversations, data, you name it. We have the ability to suck up all of the phone calls in Italy for an entire month. That was reported a couple years wow. ago. So it's an enormous amount of data. And we're kind of okay with spying on foreigners, but Americans are incidentally being caught up in this. Innocent Americans by that's, the millions. That's, that's a critical point because it's one thing to go after people who wish to do harm to this country and who wish to take away our freedom. I think we can all agree that those people absolutely have to be targeted. Uh, but what you're saying is there are innocent Americans who are warrantlessly spied upon and you know, oftentimes unmasked by all of these intelligence agencies who are now privy to that information. Right. And so we're asking for two things. This big, uh, massive amount of data that has innocent Americans in it. You can't look at it without a judge's warrant. And even more than that, information that's in that data pool because it was collected with a less than constitutional standard or really with no constitutional standard, that information shouldn't be used against Americans because it, what, the Constitution wasn't obeyed in collecting that information. So you have to have a warrant to look at it. But even if you look at it, you can't go like, oh, we're going to prosecute medical marijuana in Colorado by searching this illegal data that we've collected on foreigners. Yeah. And so this is a but very important But what's to prevent point. that from happening right now? Nothing. Yeah. Uh, other than they say, oh, we're probably not doing that, but they will not give us information. And here's the thing they may be doing. They could be searching the database and not presenting it in court. This is called parallel construction. They get the information that you're involved in the medical marijuana business. They don't want to divulge they got it from the secret database. So then they tell the police who then get a parallel investigation and they don't use the secret data. You see what I mean? Yep. So the secret data can also be used in a nefarious way to get uh, domestic officials snooping in your business. But the bottom line in our country, from the very beginning of our country, the Fourth Amendment says the government's not allowed to look at any of your stuff, your papers, invade your house without probable cause that you've committed a crime. They have to name you. They have to say what papers they're searching for. This is a big deal. It's a bedrock constitutional principle. And and I will do everything I can to fight to make sure that it does not pass unless we get our reforms attached to the bill. Now, I know uh, the Freedom Caucus in the House has some issues, uh, you know, obviously with the, the permanent allowing of FISA to go on and on endlessly. Uh, but also there is the amendment put forth by Representative Justin Amash from Michigan that also curtails some of this power and also holds it to just four years. What do you think the chances are of that uh, passing the House? Representative Amash's amendment is identical to Senator Wyden and myself to our bill. So we're exactly on the same wavelength. We met with them the other night. We are excited not only by members of the Freedom Caucus supporting this, but we're excited that this is really a bipartisan. We got right and left. There's going to be over 100 Democrats support this in the House, and there may well be over 100 Republicans. It's going to be very close. This is a chance for liberty, for the liberty movement to actually have a victory. But the, the, the liberty folks that watch your program, yeah. you need to call your congressman. This is a big fight, and we have a real chance to win one. It's a big fight, and it's a critical fight. And if there's going to be bipartisanship in 
Congress, this is where it should rest. This is the intersection. You're absolutely right. It, it's not on infrastructure. It's not necessarily on immigration. It's right here uh, where we have to be so mindful of our civil liberties. Uh, what concerns me is House Intelligence Committee Chair Devin Nunes says that he's trying to find a middle ground between civil libertarians and uh, the intelligence community, which obviously wants much broader powers. My worry yeah. is that that middle ground ends up being a, a creep toward <laughs> eroding our rights. What do you think? The, the, what they are calling the middle ground, the bill that the committee put forward, is worse than the existing law. It actually says explicitly you can use information from this foreign data to convict Americans domestically for uh, domestic crime. So it specifically allows what we're trying to prevent. And there is no warrant requirement. There's a little bit of a tweak of a reform, but be wary when the establishment of Washington puts forward a reform. It means they've heard the public and now they're going to try to trick you by putting forward a fake reform. So what they have is a fake reform. What Justin Amash is putting forward in the House is a real reform. Yeah. It's the same thing that Senator Wyden and I have in the Senate. And we're hoping that uh, there's a rebellion that goes on. And there have been a couple of votes like this. Thomas Massey's been involved in these votes where we actually have won, where the liberty movement has won, but then the, the establishment, the leadership comes back and erases their victory. So you've got to watch closely what goes on up here because there's a lot of uh, nefarious deeds that go on in the dark of night. All right, well, um, obviously your recent circumstances haven't in any way snuffed your passion. I hope you're feeling <laughs> better. I am, thanks for asking. Absolutely, thanks for coming on. Appreciate seeing you, Senator Paul. Thank you. Coming up, just